Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about hepatitis B virus symptoms. The incubation period is between one month to four months. The prodroma period. At this stage, it's not yet a full-blown you know, disease with classical signs and symptoms of either the acute hepatitis B virus infection or the chronic hepatitis B virus infection symptoms. But will be dealing with serum sickness like syndrome. And that may lead to rashes or urticaria. We may have fever greater than 38.5 degrees Celsius or polyarthritis of the knees, wrist, ankles, and metacarpophalangeal joints. There may be constitutional symptoms like anorexia, nausea, jaundice, right upper chondral pain, right upper chondral discomfort, or fatigue. The above may disappear in one to three months. In acute hepatitis B virus infection, 70% will have subclinical or anecteric symptoms, meaning the symptoms will not be so horrible and they will not be jaundiced. Anecteric means not jaundiced. Why 30% will have jaundice or the medical term become ictaric? The severity will depend on the underlying liver disease or other viral diseases you know, at the same time. Let me explain. We expect about 70% of hepatitis B virus infection in acute phase to pose less trouble. No jaundice, no serious symptoms. 30% will have jaundice, but how bad the symptoms will be will depend on whether this patient is having other liver problems before hepatitis B virus infection or they have other viral diseases, like someone with hepatitis B virus infection that is having HIV. In acute phase, it is possible to have fulminant hepatitis, which is less common at this stage, but fulminant hepatitis will become probable or possible with certain drugs with individuals who had lost weight, in people that are alcoholic, in genotype D of hepatitis B virus, all the above could have contributed to the fulminant nature of hepatitis B virus infection in acute phase. Now, chronic hepatitis B virus infection. First thing first, we have to go over the symptoms and history of the acute hepatitis B virus infection. Not everyone will have the classical history of acute hepatitis B. Remember, I've just said that 70% will have some clinical and anecteric symptoms. So many will not even know. In low prevalency regions like Europe and North America, about 50% will have the history of acute hepatitis B, but lacking in the rest patients. Majority will be asymptomatic. Still on chronic hepatitis B virus infection, they may have liver cirrhosis and they may be decompensating. Fatigue, exacerbation of the acute features, and some may actually have features of liver failure. Still on chronic hepatitis B, there is that likelihood of jaundice, splenomegaly, ascites, edema, encephalopathy, that is, hepatic encephalopathy. 
There are extra hepatic manifestations due to immune complexes leading to fever, rashes or urticarias, atragia, and arthritis. The above is collectively known as serum sickness like syndrome, and this will subside with the onset of jaundice in acute hepatitis. In chronic hepatitis B virus infection, you can find polyarthritis nodosa and glomerular disease as the main extra hepatic complications. Aplastic anemia could be found in a small proportion as part of extra hepatic manifestations. Sequelae and prognosis. In chronic hepatitis B virus infection, there may be inactive carrier state, then liver cirrhosis, then hepatic decompensation, later on hepatocellular carcinoma. Then extra hepatic manifestations like polyarthritis nodosa and glomerular disease. And finally, death. With that, I've come to the end of this short presentation as per symptoms of hepatitis B virus infection, both in acute and chronic phases. The next presentation will be on how to make the diagnosis of hepatitis B virus infection. We want to know at what level is immunity, we want to know about careers, we want to know active infection, and those who are highly infectious. Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe, remember to share. I appreciate it.